Hi, this is Melissa Avery Weir. I'm part of Future Proof Games, and today I want to show you how to build a puzzle in Exploit Zero Day, which is our social cyberpunk hacking game. Uh, so let's start with a new system. Um, let's give it a cool name. And we're going to start with, we're going to do a small puzzle today, but we're going to make it a little tricky on timing. So let's make it four by seven, if I can count. There we go. Four by seven. Um, and there are a couple tactics I want to play with. One of them is using repetition in order to sort of open up a puzzle. So something will start with maybe firing one packet, then require two packets, then require three. Um, and so that you end up with sort of this complex system in play. Um, and then we're going to do, um, we're going to put some pretty snug timing in there. We're going to use latch nodes to make that happen. So let's get started. Um, so we're going to put in a port in the upper right. And let's go ahead and put our goal node in down at the bottom center, roughly center. Um, so the player will need to zigzag or crisscross or something, some sort of mechanism to get this, this packet down. Um, let's add three more ports, but we're not going to have these ports be visible. We're going to use key nodes to hide them. So the first one, we'll put the key node here, and we're going to connect it to this first port on the left side that we've added. Let's do this all the way down. So we're just going to have three key nodes, each lined up with a port, so it looks pretty simple to hit them. And for the first one, it will be. So let's say we want to test what this looks like. We're going to, we're going to use the Test System button, which switches it, switches it into Play Mode, uh, or Test Mode. And so when the, when the player <coughs> fires a packet, they open the second port, and as predicted, it will be so let's go back to edit and let's say okay so we want this first one to be easy it's okay for the first one to be easy but let's not have the second one be quite so easy let's have the second one require a bit of repetition so we're gonna put a blocker node next to this key node which means the player can't just hit this this second one and then we'll use a sensor node which temporarily disables another node will connect it to that blocker. So this means is the player will fire this first packet once to get the key node to open up this port, and then again to disable this blocker, and then they can fire this one. So that's pretty simple. Um, but it does take a little more work. So we'll fire one packet, then fire two packets. Okay, so to, to block off this next port, so this, this, the key node is hit, this third port opens up. We don't want it to be super simple here, so make it a little bit harder. Let's add two blocker nodes. And let's use a flip-flop node connected to this furthest one. So this means is you now need to, once you've enabled this port, you'll need to fire a packet here to disable this blocker. You'll need to fire a packet here to hit this flip-flop, which will then disable this. Okay. So let's not just have this be zigzag. Let's have a packet come down this left column. We're going to use a redirect node to do that. So when we place a redirect node initially, it's in this configuration. It's slanted this way. This means is that if a packet hit it from this port on the right, it would bounce up. So if we just click it again, that will flip it. That's if I have this redirect node selected. I can also use this mouse, this cursor, and use that to flip the node as well. So this, what this does, was this, this lets this packet coming from this right-hand side port uh, begin to play along this left-hand column. Um, and that's going to give us some interesting space there. So we need to have this sensor disabled and this flip-flop disabled. So that requires both of these packets moving in interesting ways. Um, so let's see what that looks like. Okay. 
that works out pretty well. No particularly tricky timing here yet. I think we want to introduce that now. So at this point, all ports are open. And what we want to do is we want to make it, we want to have there be some little puzzle, sub puzzle almost, in this lower three rows that really sort of tightens up what we've been introducing of this, this flow of moving from port to port. All right, so going back to edit system. We're gonna use latch nodes to have some of this difficulty. And what latch nodes do is they get hit by a packet and they're disabled for a while. So if I put a latch node here and this packet directly to its left hits it, it will be disabled and it will come back on roughly the same time this port will, which is inconvenient. It doesn't actually open the way. Um, so we're going to need the packet coming from this upper right to come all the way down, hit this, at which point this left-hand port is able to hit the goal. Okay, so that's not very hard either. Let's make this more difficult. Let's introduce a second latch node, which we which would automatically be the first one hit by this port in the upper right. It's disabled. It does not help at all with, with clearing this other one. Let's keep this third port, or the second port on the left, let's keep this one in play by having its packet involved in the timing down here in this lower left-hand corner. So let's add redirect nodes. So we're gonna bounce a packet around this corner going to come back, it can disable this latch node. Once this is disabled, a port or a packet from the upper right can come down, disable this one, and then our port gets free reign. Now that is a timing puzzle. All right, so let's see if we can solve it. to fire the second one anymore because that will trigger this flip-flop which will cause me trouble. Okay, so that doesn't help. I need to fire this one slowly enough that it hits this in time for another packet to come out. Alright, so let's try it again. That's too fast. Okay, so once you have successfully solved a puzzle in test mode, then you can save it. So if you save it, the page will redirect, you'll be on the actual puzzle, your URL will change to match um, the, the new permanent URL of the system, um, and you will be in the mode to play it instead of the mode to edit it. Um, so this is the puzzle that other people would see. When a puzzle is saved, it's private. So if you want to be able to share it with other people um, on the forums, you can hit make public, and that will make it public, um, make it private again, it will, as usual, tell you if other people have solved the system, um, especially other friends of yours. And if you want to change the title, um, you can do so. Now, one last element, possibly your first element, depending on what you're interested in is that if you want to add text or story to your puzzle, you're going to want to use this, this sort of welcome banner and the system data. So the welcome banner is shown when a player visits your system and hasn't solved it yet. This will automatically pop up. So you can put messages in here that are maybe from um, 
other fake hackers or are from corporations that this, these systems represent. Um, you can put anything you want in there. Um, if you want to do some formatting, there's a link here to show how to do formatting. Show you how to emphasize text, um, how to make a link to another ECD page, um, things like that. So you save, and this formatted text becomes the thing. And once the user, once the player solves your system, um, you then they will then be shown the system data, uh, which they can't see until they do solve it. Um, so you can put a secret revealed, um, a piece of cryptographic information that needs additional decrypting. All of that can can go in this part. Whatever whatever information you want revealed as a result of, of hacking the system. All right, so that concludes creating a system, um, putting in some intro and post system data if you wish to, um, and then publicizing the system if you want other people to be able to find it. Uh, thank you, and if you want to join us in Exploit Zero Day, um, Feel free to visit exploitzero.com and create an account. Um, you can also join us on the forums, uh, join in conversation there, play along uh, with the role playing that's happening there, um, and join us in uh, crafting this fun experience. Thanks.